and you've also turned a little bit into an actor. The Burning Moore Incident mm -hmm. um, is quite an interesting uh, project for you that a lot of fans may not be aware of. Give a little insight as to how that all came about, your role in the movie, and how much you enjoyed it. Well, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Actually, I'd love to do more. Um, it was very challenging to be uh, part of it, um, doing things I'd never done before. I, I liked that quite a bit, challenging myself. Um, it's an interesting thing because when they hire you as an actor, you act and then you're done. And you walk away from it. You don't have any other involvement with it. It's not like making a record where you know, you're part of it and then you put it out and then you tour on it and you're constantly dealing with it and talking about it and performing it. No. You know, I don't even know what's happening with the film other than I think it's going into distribution uh, uh, right now, so it should be out by winter. But it was a really fun project to do. I, I learned a lot. I got to work with uh, stunt coordinators and learning, you know, how to fall down staircases without breaking my neck and uh, throwing punches and taking punches and things like that. So I'm trained now <laughs> in that aspect. So if I get, if I get in a fight, I can throw a really convincing artificial punch. <laughs> <laughs> now you can do kung fu movies coming out, right? That's my next goal. <laughs> <laughs> but you play, like, what, the serial killer in that yeah. movie? Is that right? Okay. Uh, how does, obviously it's acting, okay, we know, but how does a laid-back singer, an all-around guy with a, you know, just an all-around nice reputation play a serial? How do you get that role? Do I have a, a good reputation? <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know. I haven't heard anything negative about you. <laughs> well, you know, I did a screen test for it. They asked me to, um, to be part of it, and I said, I don't Okay, well, you'll do a screen test, and we'll know, and then you'll know, and you know, we'll all feel good about it if it, if it turns out good. You know. So I got the gig. Um, acting in that role of a serial killer is, I found, to be very difficult. Um, I had to kind of really put myself into it. You know, and, uh, I had a hard time coming out of it after a while because um, to get into it, you know, I had to put on the outfit.
Todd Smollett, who uh, manages Maiden, uh, pulls the waiter over and goes, you know, what's this music we're listening to? Uh, and the waiter says, oh, this is Will's opera. And it's uh, the three tenors. Uh, and uh, Rod, like, laughs and he stands up and holds his glass of wine and goes, the three tenors? Fuck that. I think we should make a record with Bruce and Rob and Jeff and call it the Three Tremors. What do you think? And we all toast and say, yeah, great idea, great idea. And I was into it. It was just dinner conversation, one drunken night. And uh, But the story has been like, you know, spun out of control. You know, people are like, when's the record coming? When's the record coming? I get asked this in almost every interview, you know. And I think it's been about 10 or 12 years now. Yeah, 2000, I think you guys... That's, that just shows the you know the vibe that people want, I think from a fan standpoint would love to see three of the greatest singers of all time still making music out there today doing a project. Obviously, we know getting everybody's schedules to do it is just a logistical nightmare in it of itself. Not to mention the but, egos. Yeah. I mean, my God. But I'm asking from three of us on a stage. Right. But I'm asking from a from an <laughs> artist standpoint. Would you want to see something like that, or maybe put yourself in the fan shoes and you can understand where they're coming from, and even if it may never happen? It's just something that. Well, I have to admit, I think it would be incredibly interesting if the three of us could meet, you know, in an artistic uh, middle ground, you know, where we could all throw in uh, equal amounts of, of uh, ideas and try to make something happen. You know, I think that would be really interesting, especially writing it from a singer's perspective or, and not a our players' perspective, you know, but making actual songs for singers to sing would be really interesting, you know, heavy as hell and just bombastic, but done in a way that, uh, uh, you know, would appeal to fans of rock music, you know, it would be pretty darn interesting, you know. But again, the problem is scheduling and, you know, getting together in the first place, you know. I haven't seen Bruce in, well, since we toured. Since you toured in 10, yeah, so 10 or 12 years ago. Well, I know I, I, we're gonna wrap this up really soon. I know in interviews you probably get asked this question a lot, but I did a you know try to submit some social media questions from readers out there, and the most popular one had to do with Chris DeGarmo. I know you guys are still friends. The question still comes up a lot from people wondering if he'll ever be in the band, mainly because you had you guys have said that he still occasionally writes songs with you. You guys go out to dinner and so forth. You have well documented that he just got tired of touring, and that was as long as probably a decade ago as well. Has anything changed, just for the fans out there, has anything changed in that regard? Do you ever see him coming to the band, back to the band in the future at some point, or is that just no chance at all? I would say no chance at all. But is he still working on music with you guys from periodically? No. No? No. Hasn't worked with us in years. Um, I, you know, I have a really hard time answering anything regarding him because I feel funny speaking to him. Sure. You know, um, I think he should speak for himself. Really cared about the fans of Queens, right? He would conduct an interview. You know, he would hold an interview and he would say what he felt. But obviously, you know, he's silent, so that kind of says it all right there to me. And Queens, like as we said, is all about the future and the present tonight. 30th anniversary tour here at the Majestic Theater. Uh, basically, an annual visit every time they come back to San Antonio, and we are very grateful for them doing that. So, if I had a glass of Insanian wine right now, Jeff, I would raise a toast to you and thank you, but I'll settle for a handshake. <laughs> thank you very much for taking the time to do this, and I absolutely meant what I said about one of the best singers out there ever in from the past, present, and hopefully the future. Can't wait for the show tonight. We will see you in the photo pit, and best of luck with the rest of the tour. Thank you. For Jeff, this is Jay Nunn, the San Antonio Metal Music Examiner. We'll see you next time.